This is a discussion of ionic compounds, their structure and properties. You want to diagram the formation of a binary ionic compound from the electron configurations, and you want to relate the properties of ionic compounds, especially their high melting point, to their ionic structure. Ions are formed from atoms so that their electron configuration conforms with a noble gas. So when lithium reacts with a chlorine atom, lithium loses its 2s electron to the chlorine atom. The electron then completely fills the 2p orbitals of chlorine. We can diagram it like this. And we end up with 2s0 on the lithium in a plus charge and 3p6 on the chloride with a negative charge. Notice the chloride actually uh, is a different name than chlorine. The outer lithium orbital is empty. Now, if we use the electron box diagrams, we can show the same thing. The 2s electron is lost to the chlorine's 3p, and again we have a plus charge on the metal ion and a negative charge on the minus on the uh, chlorine which is now chloride. Here's a third way to do it, using Lewis dot structures. Remember, they only show the valence electrons. So the lithium loses its outer orbital electron, and the chlorine picks it up. And again, we have a plus charge here and a minus charge there. It is not necessary to show the inner core electrons on either of these ions. So, let's practice. Show the formation of sodium fluoride in all three ways. Draw the electron configuration change, the boxes, and the Lewis diagram. And we'll pick it up again when you restart the video. There's the electron configuration. Sodium loses its 3s. And now we have 3s0 and a plus charge on the sodium 2p6 and a minus charge on the fluoride. Same thing with the boxes. The 3s is now empty with a plus charge on the sodium ion and the 2p z is full with a minus charge on the fluoride ion. Now the easiest method of course is the Lewis diagram and we see before and after the transfer of the electrons. Now you try it. Potassium and oxygen, magnesium and nitrogen. Two potassiums are needed for each oxygen, and three magnesiums are needed for two nitrogens. And of course that gives us Ki and Al2O3, the same results given by the crisscross rule. Now, since elements have a higher energy than their corresponding ions, these compounds are low energy stable. Both the metal and the nonmetal loses energies, loses their total energy to become the ions. Generally speaking, that means it requires us to melt the salt and run a strong DC electric current through it, electrolysis, to break them up back into their metal and nonmetal elements. Also, there are high melting points because the plus minus electrostatic attraction, very, very close distance, is extremely strong, very high strength bond in this low energy compound. And therefore, most binary ionic compounds are not very soluble in water because the water simply doesn't have enough energy to break the ions apart. There is an exception with the alkali salts and ammonium salts. They tend to be highly soluble in water. Also, nitrates tend to be highly soluble in water.